You know, way back in the Stone Ages, when I was in college, we didn't have the Internet in the way that you do today. It was, a, you know, prehistoric times. We did not have access to the Internet, uh, really, in, in the way that you think of it today. If we wanted to know something, we had to actually go to the library and look it up in books or find it in magazines, newspapers, whatever. We had to find a hard copy of something. And uh, so I bring this up because as a way of studying and learning, it involved a lot more memorization. It wasn't just information at your fingertips. We had to memorize things or know where to find things. And so, the, you know, the, the learning experience was just significantly different for me. Now, in this generation, in the time that you're attending college, we have the Internet in a in a much deeper way than we did back in my day. And, and so that has really changed the learning experience for many, many people. You're no longer expected to, to just memorize things as much. And that's not really a thing because you can just look it up on your phone that you have right there with you. So learning has become a very different experience. But one way that that has impacted higher education is in the area of academic honesty. It, it's, you know, it's harder to check people and keep people in check with academic honesty when you have all this information right at your fingertips. It's also become an issue with things like plagiarism and, and even unintentional plagiarism. So the, the evolution of the, the internet and the impact that's had on, on learning experiences has had a significant impact on academic honesty. So let's spend a few minutes talking about what we mean by academic honesty, what's important about academic honesty and, uh, and why we should be concerned with it. So uh, basically, we're going to talk about really five principles of academic honesty today, academic honesty, academic integrity, and those are honesty, trust, fairness, respect, and responsibility. Those are the categories we're going to talk about. Now, is that comprehensive? Probably not, but, but it's, it covers the major aspects of what we need to get at. So let's start with honesty. When we talk about honesty, we of course talking about things like lying, falsification of documents, theft of intellectual property, all of those things have to do with honesty, either by, um, by honesty, by, um, mis misleading someone and actually giving false information or even by omission, uh, you know, honesty, dishonesty by omission is still dishonesty. Right? Even, you know, if we say, well, I didn't lie, I didn't, you know, lying involves providing false information. And I didn't do that. So that's not really that bad, is it? Yeah, it can be if, you, if you're still holding out on information and, and not providing something. That's what we call deception by omission. And it's really the same thing. Um, and in academics, that takes uh, the, the form of, uh, you know, both, um, both lying and, and omission and all kinds of dishonesty uh, take on a, diff a variety of different forms. So when we talk about, yeah, lying is certainly uh, not being honest. We need to avoid that. But we also need to uh, avoid falsifying documents, for example. I mean, again, Photoshop, it's, it's not difficult to, to Photoshop something or, you know, change the look of something, falsify those documents where you got it. Um, that's, that's at your fingertips as well in today's uh, learning experience in today's world. The theft of intellectual property, we may just think, well, it's on the internet, so it's free and it's, you know, I don't have to do anything with it. No, that's somebody else's property. Uh, even if it says, you know, this is under the Creative Commons license, for example. That's a very common thing for open educational resources in higher education to be under what's called the Creative Commons license, which is intended for people to use and, and distribute freely and, and, uh, and things like that. But it also most of the time will involve attribution saying, this is where I got it. This is, I didn't come up with this idea myself. So uh, even at those levels, we need to be aware of the theft of intellectual property and dishonesty in general. Uh, being dishonest is so much easier with the internet and on the internet. So it needs to be at the top of our mind, both as, you know, just as academics, as people who are, who are pursuing academics, can, nobody benefits when you're, when you're dishonest, you're not benefiting really uh, in the long run and neither is anybody else. So, um, so there's that just in, on a most foundational level as an academic. But then when you fold in the fact that you know, as Christians, of course, we are called to not be honest. We're not to lie. We're not to falsify documents. We're not to do any of those things. So it becomes even more inherent for us as Christians to uh, adhere to honesty as a part of academic honesty and academic integrity. Academic integrity and honesty also involves a degree of trust. Um, trust between you and the institution, you and your classmates, you and your, uh, and your, your instructors, um, it involves a trust in a variety of ways, such as, um, first of all, presentation without deception. When you're, when you're presenting information, again, go back to honesty and lying and things. 
when we're presenting information, we're sharing information, whether that's spoken, whether it's written, however, we're, we're communicating something we need to do so without deception, as simple as that. We need to leave, you know, deception at the door and, and present information honestly and in with full candor when we're using statistics, don't fudge them. Don't, don't, you know, hide them, bury them somewhere deep. If it's a, it's, if it's unfavorable, we need to just present things and, and let them take it where, where it will, where it may. Plagiarism, obviously an issue um, that, uh, that uh, is, is um, should be no surprise to anybody when you, when you, I always tell my students, when you share something, when you use information or a quote or anything, or, or anything that's not from your own brain, you need to tell us where it came from. Otherwise it's plagiarism. And even if it's your own uh, item, you can still plagiarize yourself, right? If you're aware of that, you write a paper for your history class, for example, and you are in your communication class or your English class or something. And you, you think, wow, this, this same paper will really work for this assignment. I can just reuse this paper. That's self plagiarism. You created that paper, that work for another purpose and submitted it and used it for that purpose. So if you're going to use it for this one, first of all, I, I tell students, especially in like a speech class or something. It's okay to use the same body of research. If you already did the research for this history paper, you can repurpose that research to write a new paper for your English class or to prepare a new speech, a new creation of a speech for your speech class. But to just wholesale bring that over and, and use that, submit that for a different purpose once it's already been used is self plagiarism. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, but certainly that and, and obviously plagiarizing other people. Um, that breaks the trust between you and, and everyone else, you, the institution, your instructor, your classmates. Uh, so plagiarism is a really significant issue. And then receipt of unacknowledged assistance. If you got help with something, you need to tell that. I mean, you need to acknowledge that as well and let people know that. Um, I remember one time, and this was a, a totally innocent situation, I thought, when I was a freshman in college, I was pretty fluent in Spanish. I'd lived in Spain and, and my college roommate was taking Spanish 101. I was in Spanish. I was 300, 400 level Spanish from the freshman, from my first semester. So he's taking Spanish 101. I thought he's working on Spanish homework. So I'm helping him out. I'm trying to help, you know, I said, no, that's not how it would be said. It would be, you know, but I, in, without really thinking about it, I wasn't, I wasn't cheating for him. I wasn't doing the work. I was assisting him in his homework. But when he took it in, his teacher said, so who helped you with this? And he said, well, my roommate, he's, he's, you know, helped me with it a little bit. He speaks Spanish. And, and she said, I can tell because this is way beyond anything we've worked. This is not something that you would know at this level. So really, he should have at least said, you know, I got some help with this. And, and my roommate pitched in a little bit, um, probably probably a little too much, honestly, in those situations. But um, but so, you know, it's hard to hear somebody speak a language poorly when you're, <laughs> you know, it a little bit. Right. But uh when we receive assistance, we need to acknowledge that and cre give credit where credit is due. And really, now more than ever, we're, we're relying on the honor system. Um, and particularly at Christian institutions, we, we just lean into the honor system almost entirely uh, for, for online classes, for in-person classes. But you have access to everything now. So we really rely as faculty and as an institution on the honor system as much as anything, the, the, the idea that people are good and will do the right thing. And hopefully that's the case. So, um, so, uh, but, but there's this level of trust that needs to exist between the, the individual and student and everybody else around them, their classmates, their instructors, their institution, and everything else. So, and that's hard to build with when these things are present. So we need to keep that in mind that that can really violate trust and destroy that trust. We also need to consider fairness in academic honesty. What we're trying to avoid, and the key term here is we don't want people to, get to have an unfair advantage and no student should have an unfair advantage over another student. Now, is it unfair that, you know, if we, if, if I had been in the same class as my college roommate taking Spanish 101, would it have been unfair that I had such a uh, extensive knowledge of m more extensive knowledge of Spanish than he did? No, I'd earned that, right? I earned that. I, I, I learned it myself. I lived in Spain. I, I, I put in the time and I learned that. So having an advantage in Spanish would not have been unfair necessarily. But did he have an unfair advantage maybe because he had a roommate who spoke Spanish and was getting a lot of help from that person? Yeah, maybe so. But uh, so what we're looking for is not that people don't have an advantage. Everybody's got to have an advantage in some way, in some aspect probably. What we want to avoid is those unfair advantages. If you've earned that advantage, that's one thing. If it's just been given to you, that's another. 
And specifically, this comes up in academic honesty a lot when we think about things like obtaining prior access. Right? So you have a test coming up. If you get a copy of that exam before everybody else and have a chance to study and see the items, even if the answers aren't there, you have a chance to review what's going to be on the test and so forth. That's an unfair advantage that you have over the other students. Uh, and that violates that, that ethic of, of fairness and in, in academic honesty. Right? Uh, likewise, if you're providing access to something, that's an issue. If you have, if you had a test that morning in a class, right, and you somehow have the exam or you're taking an online class with somebody and you let them watch while you're taking an exam so they know what's going to be on the exam, you're providing access, that's a violation of fairness. That's giving that person then an unfair advantage in that situation. And then the use of unauthorized aids. You know, again, we're relying on the honor system so much here um, that in classes where you are online or different things, but even if it's in person, if you're using something that you're not allowed to, that violates fairness. It gives you an unfair advantage over the other students in the class and, and presents a violation of academic honesty. So we need to be cautious of these things and be sure that we're, we're just creating and, and sustaining a level playing ground for everyone in the system. That's the ideal. Let's need to talk about respect. You know, this is, this kind of indicates when you give respect, you get respect and vice versa, and, and the cycle just keeps going. But respect is an important part of uh, academic honesty and academic integrity. Uh, first and foremost, we need to avoid any inappropriate or disrespectful behavior. That's again to everybody. That's to your instructors, with your instructors, that's with your classmates. That's, you know, we need to um, step it up and have a different kind of attitude, a different kind of air. In, in in an academic sense, I mean, hopefully that carries over everywhere, but um, but we need to avoid that kind of um, inappropriate and disrespectful behavior. We need to also avoid, obviously, disruptive and threatening behavior would be a violation of academic honesty and integrity. You're creating a, a, an environment that is not um, appropriate and not um, not a positive learning experience. Then that's going to be an issue uh, when you look at the obstruction or interference uh, with another person's work. Um, that is uh, a lack of respect that, that violates academic honesty and academic integrity. Can, you're creating a, it could be creating an unfair environment, uh, but at the very least, you're creating maybe a hostile environment where somebody's focus isn't on what they're learning. It's then on uh, on what your behavior is, right? And so that's an issue. That's an issue. And then the misuse of university resources is a lack of respect, again, for everybody involved. It's a lack of respect for the institution, lack of respect for your classmates, creates an unfair advantage. Um, so when we misuse university resources in whatever way, um, that's a violation of academic honesty and, and the academic honesty policy. As far as responsibility, uh, in in this sense of, of academic honesty, you have certain responsibilities. There are certain things the institution is responsible for, right? They're, they're responsible for uh, assigning faculty who are appropriately credentialed and, and things like that, and providing an environment for you to learn. Uh, the faculty are responsible for providing the content and their content expertise and providing grading and feedback and so forth that they have, uh, and, and maintaining the, uh, the classroom um, environment. Uh, but you have responsibilities as well as a student outside of just doing your homework and, and just showing up and sitting down in the seat. Right? First of all, it's your responsibility to know the standards of the institution. Uh, it's possible that different classes have different uh, late uh, work policies, for example, different policies regarding what they will accept after the deadline, if they will accept anything after the deadline, um, and and what kind of penalty there will be, uh, those types of things. So uh, obviously the university has an overarching policy and things that they will allow and won't allow, but then within that, instructors and faculty typically have discretion to make decisions on on those types of things, again, within that framework. It's your responsibility to know the standards of the institution and also the the uh, standards for that particular class. If they're different from one to the other, you can't just go to one instructor and say, well, my other instructor, let me turn this in late or, or only took you know, 10% off instead of 15% off or whatever. Look, it's your responsibility to know the standards of the institution. And, and I always tell students, it's going to be the same when you enter the workforce. You're going to have different supervisors. Even if you're in the same position, you may uh, all, all of a sudden have a different boss, right? Different bosses like things done differently. So it's your responsibility to get to know what their uh, preferences are, uh, just like it is for you, for you to know the standards of that institution. It's your responsibility to know, to understand uh, and be aware of the penalties for that violation. You know, 
and uh, and just be prepared to uh, suffer those consequences if you if you're late with something or if you violate another aspect of the academic integrity policy it's your responsibility to understand what the penalties for that could be you also have a responsibility to say something you know the, the, the government's fond of saying see something say something now right and that relates to terrorism but really the same thing applies to academic honesty if you're not the person who's cheating that's great but if you see somebody who is cheating and or know somebody is cheating and you just don't say anything that's complicity that's that's you as an accessory so to speak that's you as a part of that violation and uh so you need to be aware that silence is not you know just because you're not doing the thing if you're aware of it and you don't say anything then you are just as guilty as the people who are actually doing it and ignorance is not a valid excuse just saying well i didn't know that was the policy i didn't know that that was the late policy i didn't know that this was the 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 consequence for violating this this academic honor uh, you know an academic standards here that's not an excuse it's your responsibility to know ignorance is not a valid excuse so you, you mix all these things together and they all work together and they're all intertwined, but that really gives us an overview of academic integrity and academic honesty. It's really important for you to, to find out specifically what are the academic uh, honesty policies of this institution and of this course uh, and whatever course you're in, whatever instructor you're working with. But, you know, again, that's your responsibility to find those things out, to be aware of them, and then to follow those guidelines and even exceed those guidelines. This is not an area where you want to just do the absolute minimum. Uh, if you can exceed those guidelines and establish that kind of trust with your institution, your faculty, and your fellow classmates, uh, then you will be in a much better situation, I promise you, academically. If you have questions about anything related to academic honesty, academic integrity, uh, the policies for uh, the course you're in or, or the institution you're with, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you via email. And in the meantime, I hope that you will give strong consideration to your role in academic honesty and integrity and, and continue to, to uphold those standards to the best of your ability.